Most of us just know about a God who cares and is willing to meet our needs at every point of need. We know of God's mercies and the fact that he does not cast off whosoever comes to him. But if that is all we know about God, then our knowledge about him is not balanced. Such knowledge is biased. It is very correct that God's love is boundless. But if we are not careful and well informed, we will take God for granted to our own detriment. When we teach that God accepts all people no matter what, we are not conveying the true nature of God. The truth is this. This is God's universe, and he created it. This is God's universe, and he will one day destroy it. This is God's universe, and he will one day judge it. And therefore, the Bible reveals to you and me that the God of this Bible has a standard he has set, and we don't go to God imposing our opinions, our desires, and our standard upon him. The Bible clearly reveals to us that the standards he has set, and we see in the Bible, record many stories that reveal God's rejection of certain behaviors and lifestyles, and even beings. The pride of Satan caused war in heaven, and he was rejected by God, and cast out of heaven like lightning. In Genesis 3, we see that Adam and Eve, our parents, were rejected by God for disobeying his command to not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They ate of the tree and were cast out of the Garden of Eden as a result. We see Cain, who offered a sacrifice the Lord rejected. Instead of correcting his mistake, Cain became jealous of his brother Abel because God accepted Abel's sacrifice. And anger and bitterness led Cain to drive him to kill Abel. What we are looking at today, however, is Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. This verse can be interpreted and is interpreted in multiple ways. The reason being is that these two verses are complicated verses, and to some people, it inspires a great deal of fear, since it seems to suggest that anyone who denies their faith on earth will be lost. So my teaching today will have three points. The first point is that to confess him means much more than to make a simple statement with your mouth. It also means to back that statement up with a life that confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus began his subject matter by first of all stating that he will testify of anyone that confesses him before men to God and his angels in heaven. Conversely, Jesus will deny anyone who denies him on earth before God and before his holy angels in heaven. Now, the idea is this. The benefit of confessing Christ before people on earth is that he will testify of you before God and all his angels. And the danger of denying Christ before people is that he will also deny you before God and before his holy angels. In other words, when the time of judgment before God comes, Jesus will vouch for everyone who embraced him as their savior. He will stand alongside them before God the Father as a righteous witness to vouch for those who are his. The truth is, it is one thing to say with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. And it is another thing entirely to obey his will and commands. The walk and the talk must go together. Don't just say you love God, act in a manner that shows you love him. Don't just say Jesus is Lord with your mouth. Live your life in a way that shows Jesus Christ is the Lord in your life. Jesus said in Luke 12, 8 and 9, Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. It is not just that Christ will deny those who deny him on the last day. He will also confess those who confess him before God and before his holy angels. It means that on the last day, Christ will treat us the same way we treated him before people while we were on earth. Just imagine the day you stand in heaven, standing before the almighty, all-powerful God, and you look around you. As far as the eye can see, angels upon angels upon angels, 
and when Jesus Christ walks up, do you want him to confess you at that moment or deny you? The choice is yours. It is better to endure persecution and scorn on earth and have Jesus confess you publicly before God and all his angels than to deny him before a few people and have him deny you before all the host of heaven. The Bible says that we will rule and reign with Jesus Christ. Look at what it is to look forward to you that don't deny Christ. God will be your God. Revelation 21, 1 through to 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now the idea is this, the benefit of confessing Christ before people on earth is that he will testify of you before God and all his angels. And the danger of denying Christ before people is that he also will deny you before God and before his holy angels. In other words, when the time of judgment before God comes, Jesus will vouch for everyone who embraced him as their savior. He will stand alongside them before God the Father as a righteous witness to vouch for those who are his. Now this is so important because you cannot approach God without Jesus. John 14 verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This is so important for us to understand. The fact is Jesus Christ, the gateway to heaven. He is the one only path to God. And if Jesus rejects you, you are in big trouble. Are you denying Jesus in your life, in your social circles? Are you afraid to be known as a Christian? Are you a one day a week Christian? Are you a Christian only on the day you go to church, but for the rest of the week you hide your faith? You hide Jesus because you are afraid of what people will label you. Are you ashamed of Jesus Christ because you want to please the world? The truth is, my brother and sister, is that you cannot please God and please the world at the same time. It's either you will offend Jesus and please the world or you will offend the world and please Jesus. Make up your mind. Jesus told us that following him will cause divisions amongst families. Matthew 10 verse 34 to 36. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. The truth is, it is one thing to say with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, and it is another thing entirely to obey his will and commands. The walk and talk must go together. Don't just say you love God. Act in a manner that shows you love him. Don't just say Jesus Christ is Lord with your mouth. Live your life in a way that shows Jesus Christ is the Lord in your life. My second point is this. If you have denied Christ before in your life out of panic, or for any other reason, you are not condemned to hell. This is not the unforgivable sin. Confess your sin to the Lord and He is faithful to forgive you. The full context of this passage of Scripture suggests that a single accidental or purposeful denial of Jesus will not necessarily lead to Jesus denying you. Before His Father in heaven, we see Peter denied Christ three times, three times out of fear of being arrested. And we see Jesus restoring Peter in John 21 verse 15 to 17. We as Christians are not saved by perfect acknowledgement of Jesus, no. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, 
and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So point one was that to confess him means much more than to make a simple statement with your mouth. It also means back the statement up with a life that confesses to Jesus Christ as Lord. Point two is that if you have done it before in the past, you are not condemned to hell, you can still make things right with God. And point three is that this warning is referring to those who live lives that consistently or easily disassociate themselves from Christ for the sake of health, wealth, popularity, or freedom. Listen to me. Whether you obey God's commandments or not, it doesn't do God any favors. He is still in control whether you obey Him or not. Even if no one on earth obeyed His commandments, it wouldn't change the fact that He is God. God's commandments are there for our own benefit, and following His commandments is enlightened self-interest. John 14, 15, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandment. God does not measure our love for Him by how much offering we donate in church or by the amount of tithe we pay. God does not also measure our love for Him by how many times we attend services. Our love for God is proven by the level of our submission and obedience to His will. This reminds me of the old faithful song, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. No turning back, no turning back.